north of the fourth bridge, north soon of the fourth road bridge, the Kingdom of Fife, a county that's written a lot of history and still has plenty to write. Fife is surrounded on three sides by water. Its tiny fishing villages produced Scotland's first admiral. From one of them, Alexander Selkirk sailed into the world of literature and pantomime. He was the original Robinson Crusoe. Scarlet guns flash against the background of Scotland's oldest university. It was founded four and a half centuries ago. The royal and ancient club at St Andrews lays down the law for a world of golfers. A beggar's mantle, fringed with gold. That was how one Scottish king described the kingdom of Fife. Some of that gold grows on the county's rich agricultural plain. There's gold below Fife's plains too, black gold. For 700 years, coal has been mined here. Every day, the wagons move out to all parts of Britain, towards the steel mills and railways, the steamships and power plants. Here is part of that new history Fife is writing, the new and dramatic architecture of Rothes Colliery, East Fife. It's odd to think that the first machines in industry were attacked by howling mobs of frightened men. It was too early then to see that the machine marked the end of an era, an era of back-breaking, muscle-tearing, bitter physical labor. Machinery doesn't sweat, but man does. A miner certainly does. But at least at Rothes Colliery, no man does anything that a machine can do for him. George Mackay has been at Rothes Colliery two years, but he's been a miner all his days. And he had deep roots in the community he left. His father was a collier, so was his grandfather. And his father's canaries were known all over the country. When George married, he married a miner's daughter. Met her 15 years ago at a dance in the local welfare hall. So you see, it wasn't an easy decision George made to come to Fife. It wasn't easy at all. But like most difficult decisions, he's glad now that he made it. He likes the feeling of being looked after. Skilled medical attention available all the time. So far, George has been lucky. The medical centers of today look clean and efficient and attractive. And so do the nurses. No complaints about the canteen either. Hard work makes hungry men, and a good canteen keeps hungry men fit to work hard. Saturday, the day we feel we've all earned. The day that belongs to us, the day we belong to ourselves. 
Whatever the destination board says, every Saturday bus is bound for leisure by way of relaxation. Even when the signpost bears a name that is brand new in the Kingdom of Fife. In 1947, 6,000 acres of land were set aside. The project, a new town in the heart of Fife, to house the men who would come to work at the National Coal Board's new pit at Rothes and at the other adjacent collieries. Ideas became plans. Plans became blueprints, and at last, the ground was cleared for action. Houses began to grow up stiffly from the ground, course after course of bricks, walls and floors and roofs, windows and power and water, all the complex skills that go to create a house. Finally, the finishing touches, the decorative bits, like pointing the walls. After the pointing, the painting. A bold use of colour is to a house what cosmetics are to a woman. In two years, a house has become a home. George's family have settled in easily. Rothes is a town of passionate gardeners. They've even formed a thriving gardening association. A walk along the houses makes you almost believe in those pictures you see on seed packets. Maybe it's the Fife climate and soil. Maybe it's an expression of pride in their fine new town. Maybe they know that a fine garden gives a house personality. Could even be a healthy rivalry. Let's leave George's family on its way into town and have a look at the town itself. Most towns just happen, but Glenrothes is one that happened on purpose. The Glenrothes Development Corporation planned its town with a view to the necessities of the moment and the demands of the future. It planned imaginatively too. There's no shrinking here from colour. The imaginative design of the Glenrothes Flats has already won two Salt Isle Society awards. The community has its own places of worship for those of the Presbyterian faith, St. Margaret's, and that's St. Paul's Roman Catholic Church. When people like George and his family uproot themselves, it sometimes means breaking the bonds of affection between the old and the young. Glenrothes solves that problem by allocating special houses to the elderly. They have their place in the community, and the place they have is their own. Houses for the old, and for the young, the immemorial attractions. The endless joy of discovering that what goes up must come down. Who said there was plenty of room at the top? Well, it's time we caught up with that family again. Where are they likely to be? Let's see now. Saturday. Oh, of course. Shopping. Mrs. Mackay has plenty of choice. The town has a very attractive main centre and there are also several local shopping areas. Apart from mountaineering, there's no more dangerous pastime for a man than a woman shopping. The bait is laid. It's wonderful, perfect, vine. Oh, why isn't there another word? 
bet you he could think of one. <laughs>